step into a time machine and let's journey back to a simpler era. A black and white world that once flickered on the screens of living rooms. Imagine the thrill of turning the knob on that vintage television set. The cathode ray tube whirring to life as it brought forth a new realm of entertainment. It was a world where laughter echoed through the airwaves, where quirky characters danced across the screen, and where a certain show called The Dick Van Dyke Show etched its name into the annals of television history. Picture yourself in 1961, the year this groundbreaking series burst onto the scene. As the opening credits rolled and the catchy theme song enveloped the room, you embarked on a journey into the hilarious misadventures of Rob Petrie, played by the iconic Dick Van Dyke himself. The witty banter, the slapstick humor, it all unfolded in a way that felt like a warm embrace, inviting you to be a part of the Petri family's escapades. Perhaps it was the unforgettable chemistry between Dick Van Dyke and Mary Tyler Moore that captivated you, their on-screen dynamic lighting up the room with an enchanting spark. Or maybe it was those moments when Rob would trip over the ottoman, an accidental mishap that became a delightful recurring gag. And who could forget those snappy one-liners from the ever-charming Buddy Sorrel, portrayed by the talented Maury Amsterdam. But enough nostalgia, let's dive into the fascinating tidbits that lie beneath the surface of this beloved show. From behind-the-scenes anecdotes that will raise your eyebrows to trivia that will leave you in awe, there's a treasure trove of random facts waiting to be unveiled. Did you know that the show's creator, Carl Reiner, drew inspiration from his own experiences as a TV writer? Or that the show's title was initially going to be Head of the Family, but was changed to honor the star-studded talent of Dick Van Dyke? These are just a taste of the juicy morsels that make up the intricate tapestry of the Dick Van Dyke show. So, as you sit back and reminisce about your first encounter with this timeless series, let the memories wash over you like a wave of laughter and warmth. The Dick Van Dyke show wasn't just a show, it was a journey into a world where comedic genius thrived, where characters became friends, and where each episode left you with a grin that lasted long after the credits rolled. And now, without further ado, let's delve into the captivating world of random facts about the Dick Van Dyke Show. Prepare to be amazed, amused, and enlightened as we peel back the layers of this TV classic, revealing the secrets that have remained hidden for decades. Get ready to relive the magic as we unravel the tales that shaped the show's legacy. The Dick Van Dyke Show, a television series that aired from 1961 to 1966, emerged as a classic sitcom celebrated for its wit, humor, and portrayal of everyday life. Created by Carl Reiner, the show drew inspiration from Reiner's own experiences. As a comedy writer, it centered around the lives of Rob Petrie, played by Dick Van Dyke, a head writer for a comedy variety show, and his wife Laura, portrayed by Mary Tyler Moore. The show's dynamic revolved around the mishaps and misadventures of Rob's work at the showbiz and the couple's domestic life. The iconic characters, especially Rob and Laura, with their chemistry and relatable struggles, brought authenticity to the screen. Their marriage was portrayed as realistic and progressive for its time, showcasing them as equals and emphasizing their genuine affection. The show's unique style stemmed from its meta-humor, often breaking the fourth wall as characters addressed the audience. Impactful in shaping the sitcom landscape, the series demonstrated the potential of combining workplace and domestic scenarios, influencing future shows like Friends and The Office. Its comedic timing and razor-sharp writing paved the way for character-driven humor that continues to resonate. Furthermore, the show presented a glimpse into the era's societal norms and values. Random facts, the show initially faced resistance, with network executives doubting Dick Van Dyke's suitability for the lead. The iconic opening sequence of Dick Van Dyke tripping over the ottoman became synonymous with the show. Carl Reiner, the creator, occasionally guest starred as Alan Brady, the egocentric host of the comedy variety show. The show garnered multiple Emmys, cementing its place in television history. Mary Tyler Moore's bold fashion choice ignites capri pants craze in the early 1960s and the early 1960s. A seismic shift rippled through the realm of television and fashion, catalyzed by a seemingly innocuous wardrobe choice on The Dick Van Dyke Show. The show, known for its wit and charm, garnered attention not only for its comedic prowess, but also for Mary Tyler Moore's revolutionary attire. 
In a time when dresses were the sartorial norm for housewives, Mary Tyler Moore's character, Laura Petrie, challenged conventions by confidently donning capri pants. Moore's audacious explanation resonated. She pointedly stated that the housewives she knew often preferred pants for their practicality. Her bold stance ignited a small controversy, raising eyebrows and sparking debates about the societal expectations tied to women's clothing. Remarkably, Moore's choice wasn't confined to the screen it transcended into reality. Capri pants swiftly evolved from a mere television novelty into a burgeoning fashion sensation. The influence was undeniable. Moore's fashion statement inspired a wave of women to embrace this liberating trend. Capri pants, characterized by their calf-length cut, rapidly gained traction, adorning the legs of women across the nation. The Dick Van Dyke show had inadvertently sparked a fashion revolution, redefining the boundaries of women's wear. The series, which itself was an embodiment of change and modernity, mirrored the evolving cultural landscape. Mary Tyler Moore's unapologetic challenge to conventional norms, both on and off the screen, amplified the winds of change that were sweeping through the early 1960s. And so, the television show became an emblem of empowerment, a catalyst for reconsidering societal norms, and an unexpected trendsetter. Mary Tyler Moore's capri pants became more than just a style choice. They represented a subtle yet profound shift in the zeitgeist. The influence of the Dick Van Dyke show in Mary Tyler Moore's character endures, reminding us that even the smallest choices can leave an indelible mark on culture and history. The Dick Van Dyke Show, a gamble that paid off in the bustling entertainment landscape of 1961, a television series emerged that would prove to be a turning point for its lead actor, Dick Van Dyke. Departing from the glittering success of the Broadway hit Bye Bye Birdie, for which Van Dyke had clinched a Tony Award, he took an audacious leap of faith by agreeing to star in The Dick Van Dyke Show. The stakes were high, leaving the comfort of the theater scene for the unpredictable realm of television was a calculated risk. The show's success would decide Van Dyke's fate, triumph meant job security, while failure loomed as a threat of unemployment. Navigating this pivotal juncture, Van Dyke assumed the role of Rob Petrie, head writer of a comedy sketch show within the series. As the charismatic anchor of the show, Van Dyke effortlessly endeared himself to audiences with his impeccable comedic timing and affable charm. Van Dyke's gamble paid off in more ways than one. Not only did the Dick Van Dyke show become a resounding hit, solidifying its place in television history, but it also paved the way for Van Dyke's enduring legacy as a versatile entertainer. Surprisingly, this wasn't the only risk undertaken in the series. Mary Tyler Moore, who played Laura Petrie, faced a name change within the show itself. Following her divorce from her first husband, Richard Meeker, her character's maiden name was transformed from Meeker to Meehan. This subtle yet impactful alteration mirrored Moore's personal journey, symbolizing a new chapter in her life. As the years have marched on, the resonance of the Dick Van Dyke show remains undeniable. In recognition of its cultural impact, the show was voted 13 on TV Guide's esteemed list of the 50 greatest TV shows of all time. This accolade solidifies its status not just as a groundbreaking sitcom, but as a timeless piece of television history. In hindsight, Dick Van Dyke's decision to embrace television with The Dick Van Dyke Show was more than a gamble. It was a calculated step that shaped his career trajectory and enriched the world of entertainment. As the show continues to tickle our funny bones and capture our hearts, it serves as a reminder that sometimes, taking a leap into the unknown can yield extraordinary rewards. When CBS canceled The Dick Van Dyke Show after its debut season in 1961, series creator Sheldon Leonard embarked on a determined quest to salvage the beloved comedy. He embarked on an unexpected journey to Cincinnati, Ohio, headquarters of Procter & Gamble, aiming to sway the corporate giant into sponsoring the show's revival. Procter & Gamble's half-hearted agreement, however, was not enough to fully resurrect the show. In an ironic twist, it was the L'Oreal Tobacco Company, known for Kent cigarettes, that lit up the second chance. Agreeing to sponsor the remaining half, the tobacco company sealed the deal that brought the Dick Van Dyke show back for its triumphant second season. As fate would have it, the tables turned years later. By the show's fifth and final season, CBS found itself in a similar position, imploring for the show's continuation as it had become a staple of television entertainment. A testament to the show's enduring appeal, 
The same network that once pulled the plug was now advocating for its continuation. The intricacies of television history often remain hidden, like the discarded lyrics to Earl Hagen's iconic musical theme, never to be heard on screen. The talented Maury Amsterdam, a mainstay on the show, penned these lyrics, but they were never integrated into the broadcast. It wasn't until years later, when the fourth season's DVDs and Blu-ray discs were released, that audiences got a taste of Amsterdam's lyrical touch in a bonus segment. These long-lost lyrics add a musical layer to the show's legacy, offering fans a new perspective on the familiar two. Within the ensemble of the show's recurring characters, one figure stood in the shadows, quietly contributing to the series' success. Frank Adamo, often uncredited, played multiple roles across numerous episodes, from waiters to deliverymen. Beyond his on-screen appearances, he also served as Dick Van Dyke's personal assistant, and even stood in for the star as needed. In a notable shift, the show's final season saw Adamo receiving the recognition he deserved credited as the head waiter in the episode titled You Ought to Be in Pictures. The Dick Van Dyke Show remains a testament to the unpredictability of television industry dynamics, where cancellation transformed into renewal and uncredited assistance evolved into on-screen acknowledgement. The show's journey is a reminder that even in the world of entertainment, the storylines unfolding behind the scenes can be just as captivating as those on the screen. As we bid adieu to the enchanting world of The Dick Van Dyke Show, it's as if we're parting ways with old friends who filled our lives with laughter and warmth. The show, a timeless mosaic of humor and heart, has woven itself into the fabric of our cultural tapestry. The charisma of Rob's slapstick antics, the effervescent charm of Laura, the camaraderie of the writing team huddled in their creative haven, all these elements form a symphony of nostalgia that resonates across the ages. Now, dear reader, it's your turn to step into the spotlight of memory. What was it about the show that pulled you in? Was it the witty banter that echoed your own family dynamics? Or perhaps it was the clever mishaps that brought solace in life's imperfections? The Dick Van Dyke Show became more than a series. It was a window into the myriad corners of our lives that deserve both laughter and understanding. As we embrace the legacy of this iconic show, take a moment to reflect on the moments that tugged at your heartstrings and tickled your funny bow. Share your cherished memories and thoughts with us, like messages in a time capsule bridging the years. Your stories connect us, for they reflect the universal experiences that knit us together, regardless of the era. So, from the vintage black and white screen to the vibrant landscapes of our minds, let's celebrate the impact of the Dick Van Dyke Show and the bonds it has forged. Thank you for joining us on this journey through laughter, love, and life's delightful follies. Your reminiscences enrich this collective tale, reminding us that even in the fast-paced modern world, the echoes of Rob, Laura, and company continue to ripple through time. In fond appreciation,